Welcome to Sanctuary Part 2. This is the second of three parts to the Sanctuary series, and this part is Travel by Sea on Handmade Rafts. In Part 1, the refugees were walking, so it was travel by land. In Part 3, they will be arriving at the shelters. But here we have a sense of sea going with all the symbolism that rafts have always meant throughout time and throughout areas of the world. Entering the gallery in this installation, there are pieces coming forward. The earliest one near the door is called Almost There, and actually the foot of that figure is supposed to be stepping off. There's other passengers uh, in the back of that raft, and so as you come in, you're invited to see more. Other pieces are also coming forward, but there's a second layer that's behind them, and that second layer uh, are the ones that are not floating forward at all, and that's where we have the capsized pieces uh, and some of the smaller pieces. Behind all of that is the mural. I realized as I started picturing how this would look, these have to come from someplace. They're not gonna come from a white wall. Uh, they really have to come from whatever they are escaping. In the center is a fire, a symbolic fire, and going out from the fire on both sides are kinds of wings of smoke so that when somebody walks into the gallery, they're seeing a complete environment. They're seeing the mural, they're seeing layers, and they're drawn in to not just look at the surface of anything, but to walk through it and walk around it and maybe walk through more than once as they realize, oh my gosh, uh, I am in the midst of something that's in motion. In Buddhism, there is an idea that the rafts symbolize the way across troubled lives into a time and place of peace. You don't have to go that far, though, to understand the significance of people needing to grapple together whatever they can to go across difficult and large seas to find a chance at another homeland. There is a mom who holds her baby's foot. It's that kind of tiny detail, very, very small detail, easily overlooked, that is the tenderness of the show. And you find tiny details like that throughout. Some of them have no one on them, though. There's one where there are two little baby shoes it's called bulrushes. There's actual bulrushes that grow in Los Angeles. It's Moses and the bulrushes. In a way, you might think the original refugee. I use found objects in some of these pieces. It's true in all three parts. It's important to the subject that the materials are humble, that there's nothing slick or polished or expensive about anything here. The mass or something a gardener was throwing away. There are lots of things here that have no money value because it's not about that. It's about the intrinsic value of everything. And I hope that the whole series will communicate that. It's respect for those who have lost their homes whether they're on the street of Los Angeles or in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, it's respect 
for those who are trying to get a better life, no matter what the reason for needing it. And it's respect for all of us who are surviving these times. I hope that this is a completely immersive and interactive experience. That as a visitor moves around the space, they gain insight into the whole of it by realizing how the parts fit together. The physical reality of the burlap, of the rope, of the bark, of the twine, of the simulated water uh, is something that happens when somebody is really here and immersed in it and is part of it rather than a viewer being outside. I would like people to feel that they are not outside of this experience, that it's not someone else's experience to feel sorry about or to say, oh my, that's too bad. I would like them to feel this is me or this could be me or this is all of us or even this speaks to our time whether or not we are refugees from another land or if we are just refugees in our own land at a time when we are isolated and when there are so many threats perceived and real.